Hi everybody, happy Sunday. I hope you've had an amazing week. Uh, today for this episode of Sunday School, I want to talk about flooding. We got this question in the question box yesterday that somebody asked, um, I'm having flooding issues, what are some good ways to prevent that? So we're gonna go into a couple different options that we can talk about where you can prevent flooding and if you experience flooding, how to deal with that. Let's get going. So what is flooding? I mean, in layman's terms, basically flooding means your gel hitting the skin, right? So when anytime, if we're painting with just, you know, a simple gel polish or gel color application, uh, or more often times people are talking about when we are building with builder gels and applying more of an apex to the nail, uh, sometimes that gel can seep into the side walls, can seep into the skin, can hit your cuticle area. And obviously we don't want that because anytime we have gel coming in contact with the skin, for one, it can cause sensitivities and allergic reactions. And for two, it can cause lifting if you leave that and cure it and just don't treat it whatsoever. So tip number one, when we're talking about preventing flooding in the first place is prep work. We all know everything comes down to prep work. If your prep work is clean, your application is always going to be way cleaner. If you don't have those cuticles pushed back, refined, cleaned out, and nice and smooth, any little jagged areas that are coming into contact with the nail or kind of like affecting the perimeter of the nail is going to be so much easier for you to hit with your brushes. So it's going to cause a lot easier flooding, if that makes any sense. Uh, so as long as you're making sure you have the cleanest margins possible, you're gonna have a much easier time applying your overlays or your gel polishes without any flooding. Tip number two is something a lot of people might not think about until they realize it. And then once you realize it, it's like, wow, I can't believe I didn't do that before, was checking your room temperature and checking the temperature of your actual gels. If the room that you're working in is a lot warmer, it's going to decrease the viscosity of your gel. It's gonna make it more runny. And if it's more runny, it is more likely to go places where you don't want it to go. It is typically better to work in a cooler temperature room so that your gel is a little bit stiffer, it holds up a little bit better, and it's not gonna blob this way or blob that way where you don't want it to go. Tip number three when it comes to preventing flooding in your gel application is actually checking the hand position of your application or like on your client or even on yourself if you're doing it on yourself. If you're working on a flat hand that is just placed, you know, like this and you're applying the gel this way, the gel is much more likely to go side to side or to float back because, you know, the hand is a little bit more likely to tip this way, tip that way, tip that way. It's actually best to keep the hand placed more vertically. This allows the gel to float towards the tip of the nail from where you've placed it versus floating back into the skin or from side to side into the side walls. Keeping that hand placed vertically is actually going to make your application of overlays a lot more user-friendly. It's gonna make your life a lot simpler and it's gonna stop a lot of those flooding issues. All right, hypothetical time. So you flooded a nail. What do you do now? You've got some gel hitting the cuticle, hitting the skin, hitting the side walls, and it's starting to float everywhere and you're panicking and you're trying to clean it up with your brush and you start chasing that gel around. Just wipe it. Wipe the whole thing off, let it dehydrate, try again. Gel calls to gel. This is what gel does. This is why we apply our base layers. This is why we apply everything so cleanly and make sure we have those clean margins because once you have gel on the skin, even if you wipe that away, there's always going to be residue. And especially if you wipe it away with alcohol or acetone, you're actually diluting the gel that is on the nail and making it more runny. So it is more likely to go where that gel has been before and it's just gonna be a perpetuating problem. So just do yourself a favor, wipe that nail, give her another go. I promise you're gonna have a better time that way. So there you go, just a couple quick tips on how to prevent and fix flooding issues. If you have any questions, as always, we have our cute little question box right up here. Feel free to drop your questions in there and I will do my very best to get back to you by the end of the day. Other than that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and we will see you next time. Take care.